Before the theory of gravity was a glimmer in Newton's imagination, the natural physics of density and buoyancy already perfectly explained why apples fall down. Objects fall or rise based on their relative density to the medium surrounding them. Apples fall because they are denser than the air, while helium balloons rise because they are lighter. No gravity necessary. This is why raindrops fall down through the air and air bubbles rise up through water. Everything seeks its relative density and rises or falls until settling accordingly. This is why a tiny pebble sinks to the bottom of the ocean, but gigantic cruise ships and aircraft carriers stay afloat on the surface, because even though a pebble is so small, its mass, relative to its volume, its density, is more than water, so it sinks. All right. This one's frustrating, isn't it? I mean, I, flat earthers are the dumbest people on the planet. It's really think, ridiculous. But it, but it was interesting to look into this to try to come up. What's a really good way to to kind of encapsulate this and explain what, what's going on. Sure, there's a superficial resemblance between buoyancy and gravity. You know, up and down, vertical movement, both can cause it. But the thing is, buoyancy doesn't exist without a force like gravity. Yeah. It's just not there. It's like a, buoyancy is like a side effect. You know, you'd, you know, it's, um, like a, it's, a, it's a phenomenon, right, that was right. observed. They observed that you know, things will float if they're, li if they're less dense than the medium that they're in. Right. But Archimedes it doesn't explain and all that. why that happens. Right. You and need gravity to understand why it happens because of the relative forces that are acting on things. Right. There's, a, the upward, there's the downward force of gravity and the upward force of buoyancy, and that's how things balance out. Right. What you, need, the, you need a force to create a pressure gradient, yeah. and that's what's happening, say, in water, for example. There's more pressure at the bottom of the object that's submerged than... than, than so there's more pressure pushing up than pushing down. And that's why, if the density is right and everything's right, that's why it's, it's going to go yeah. up. But, but, you, but you need that force. Yeah, that, force. That pressure gradient needs to be created by a force. But you're and thinking in modern terms. So you're thinking like in a Galilean, Newtonian notion of force, right? Things have to be acted upon by a force. They're going back thousands of years to like an Aristotelian kind of uh, explanation of the universe that things just tend to seek their level, right? They just right. go to their whatever their relative density level but is. They're not even thinking in terms of force. It's pre-medieval thinking. Like right. they, they, so they're missing a couple of thousand years of, of philosophical right. and scientific but, advancement right. there. Right, exactly. And so what modern science has to say about this is, is that, is that you've got that, you need the, the pressure gradient created by a force. So bring this out into space where there's, where there's no gravity. What happens? There's, there is no pressure gradient. Mm -hmm. So if you have a bucket of water in space and not, there, buoyancy will not exist because there's no pressure gradient. There's no, there's no gravity to create that pressure yeah, gradient. Yeah, if you take a ping pong ball and you put it at the bottom of a glass of water on the space station, it does not come to the surface. Because there's no there's no gravitational gradient there. Right. They're in microgravity. So so here's a this, here's a great example. Now mm -hmm. you go into deep space where there is no gravity. So can you recreate it with another force? And you absolutely can. <clears throat> you spin. Imagine a bucket in space filled with water, and you and you spin it. Um, so what happens is you don't have gravity, but you have a pressure gradient caused by you know centrifugal force, yeah. centrifugal force from the perspective of the spinning the spinning yeah. bucket. So you could put something in that pressure gradient, and you would have a, a radial uh, phenomenon, not not vertical like on Earth with gravity, but a radial mo radial movement mm -hmm. caused by caused by the f that that fictitious force cent right. centrifugal force. So so there it is. That's why you need a force like gravity on Earth for buoyancy to exist. Buoyancy does not explain or do away with the need for gravity. By the way, what, what Newton uh, discovered, if you will, was not just that gravity exists. Uh, what, when he, you know, the, the story of him witnessing the apple fall, it was not just, oh, there must be some force that caused that apple to fall, because that was already kind of in the, that was already known, if, if it were, that yeah. was the prevailing theory. He, his connection was maybe that force is the same as the force keeping the moon moving around right. the Earth. Yeah. Which, of course, how do you explain that based upon density gradients, right? Right, you right. You can't explain the motion of the planets. You need gravity to explain the motion of the planets, which it does very well. Yeah. Uh, and that was sort of the insight. The forces acting on Earth are the same as the forces acting in the heavens, keeping the moon around the Earth. That idea that what's happening on Earth is the same as what's happened, like laws, natural laws right. apply on Earth equally in, in the heavens, 
was also like an innovation of Newton. And so that was really the key insight. There. Yeah, that was huge. Not Cle just there's gravity, you know, clearly, just putting a name to something that was already observed. Clearly a bright guy. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, but of course the flat earthers have to find some way to do away with gravity because gra gravity completely destroys the flat earth model. You can't have a flat earth. Uh, by gr gravitational forces would cause anything with that size and mass to collapse into roughly a sphere. So they right. say, oh, okay, so maybe there's no gravity, so they have to come up with some re weird, bizarre, stupid reason to get rid of gravity. Um, of course, then they have to explain, you know, again, how, how the universe works. And they really can't. They just don't really have... They just sort of make stuff up or they say weird, weird dismissive things as perspective or whatever. They don't have a coherent model of cosmology. It's, it's really all yeah. just completely, you know, primitive, pre really pre-intellectual, uh, just utter nonsense.